What is going on, guys? Nick here with Angling Addicts Pacific Northwest. Welcome back to another episode. Today, we're going to continue talking about soft bead fishing for steelhead and specifically three different ways that you can get your uh, beads set up on your line so you can get out there catching some fish. Yeah. Now, as always, when we're talking about bead fishing and our, uh, our setup, what we're going to be using here is an egg dropper loop. Uh, it's just a good setup to have your hook on there, and it actually keeps things nice and straight. In my opinion, it gets you one of the uh, best hook sets on there. Now, this is a super simple setup, but for those of you that are new to bead fishing, some of this, uh, when there's so many different things out there, you kind of got to, it get, becomes overwhelming for the most part. So what we're going to start out with is your typical bobber stop. Now, you'll get uh, some of these when you buy a little package of bobbers, or you can actually go out and you can purchase just the bobber stops, which I recommend because for some reason I seem to go through those uh, rather quickly. Now what's nice about these bobber stops, if you can see on the very tips there, it has uh, little tiny loops. So it's gonna make it easy to take our tag end and we're just gonna run it through one of these loops. It's always a bit harder on video, but we've run through as you can see right there. So now we're just gonna grab onto that little stop. We're gonna leave the bead because we don't need that bead. And you can see now it's starting to uh, pull off there. So we're just gonna grab it, finish pulling it all the way off. So now we've got that little stop on our line. So now we're just gonna take it and we're gonna run it all the way down towards our hook. And we're talking about distance between a bead and the hook. The two finger to two and a half finger rule uh, is usually a good one to go by. It seems to be what everybody out there is doing and specifically those that are actually out there uh, catching fish. So if I run back there, you can see we're actually probably about three fingers. So we're gonna bring it down just a little bit more. It's mentioned two to two and a half fingers. So that's good there. What's nice about this is we can still make an adjustment if need be. So now we're gonna come back up here to our tag end. And the first thing I wanna do so I don't forget about it. So when you pull those things off the, uh, the little holders there, it puts a little kink in your line, which I do not like. So let's get that off of there. And then I've got some of my beads set up on this sewing needle here because not all beads come with that hole already in the middle. So a nice little trick is if you have happen to have a, uh, a sewing needle, it's gonna be the same concept though, where we're just gonna run the uh, tag end of our line through the eyelet on this uh, sewing needle here. So that's on there, we can just pull that bead off, maybe. There we go. So now we've got that bead on there. So now we can just take that bead and we're gonna run that guy all the way down to that uh, little stopper down there. And we'll let it rest just on top of it there. You'd see that is our finished product. And as mentioned, if you wanna move it further than uh, the two fingers we have there, we can just kinda back off that soft bead, pull up that bobber stop kind of get it reset back on there. And that guy is good to go. So for this next one is gonna be kind of the same concept. This is one that I did on a video before this for the uh, B&R soft beads specifically. So this is a, a nice little bobber stop or nice little bead stop that they have already got on there. So we're just gonna run it through, pull that whole fella off of there. So now it is on our line, run that guy. Same thing, we're gonna run it all the way down to about two, two and a half fingers away from our hook there. And we'll again grab another bead. And you can see how it puts that kink in the top of your line up there. So we're just gonna run that back through our eyelet. Grab our pink bead. And then we're gonna run that guy all the way down our line. And it's gonna take a little bit of pressure once you get to this point to push that tubing inside here, but what you can do if it doesn't wanna slide down, which is nice, I'm actually applying quite a bit of pressure right now and that bead is not wanting to drop. You can see it sits on there really nicely. And again, if you need to, you can move this thing up, down, wherever need be. So that is that setup. So there is another setup that uh, I will use, I will do in a different video. It is the uh, bead knot with a little like three mil glass uh, bead 
that uh, you get tied on to the end of your line and it just works like one of these little stoppers down here. But for our third guy here, again, just gonna beat up. Now what's nice about this one is this setup works when you don't have any more stops and you're out there. And uh, a lot of these beads will hold in their place, but you don't want it sliding down. A lot of you've probably seen it when you cast out, you run your bead through and you reel it back up, your bead is sitting all the way down there by your hook. And uh, just having that too close to your hook is not going to catch you some fish. Now we're just going to back up our bead away from that hook. So it gives us a little bit of space here. Because what we're going to do is take that hook and we're going to run it right back where our line went through. We're going to try and stay behind that line we already ran through there. Because what we do not want this to do is uh, when this bead rips apart, when a fish puts all that pressure on it, it's going to rip this bead apart. And what we don't want to do is create a knot in the line. So we're going to give it a little bit of a spin. Now, you see we've just got this loop there. So we're going to get our bead to where we want it to be. There's two fingers, so we don't want to go in any further. We're going to hold it in place. And there you go. No stop needed. So what's going to happen is when the fish pulls through and it ends up getting hooked, it's going to put enough pressure that it's just going to end up ripping this bead apart. So that is a, a good setup if you're out there and you're out of uh, little bead stops or anything. So that is three little setups there that will get you out on the water and fishing. I hope that helps some of you guys out a little bit. Uh, if so, please leave some comments. Subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. But as usual, you guys, best of luck to all of you, and I hope to see you out on the water.